Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our subject support uh, talk on, for business and law. Uh, my name is Henrik. Um, I actually graduated from DMU back in 2017, which feels like a really, really long time ago. Um, and I study human resource management. So um, this is my subject area, but we are going to be joined by a couple of experts today who will be able to tell you the ins and outs, everything behind the scenes and what it's like to study a business and law course as a student here at DMU. Um, so what we'll do is I'll just bring in um, the students that are supporting us today. And um, firstly, I'll start with Marta. Hi there, you're right. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Marta. I studied at DMU as well. I studied advertising, marketing, communications. I finished a year ago and then I did my master degree here, but I'm also working in the business and law faculty in the marketing team. Cool, thank you, Marta. And we'll bring in Dominica. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dominica, you're all right. Yeah, I am. So my name is Dominika and I am second year business law student at the Montfort University. Okay, great. And hello, Karis. Hello. Hi. Hiya. Okay. So uh, my name is Karis and I'm a third year accounting and finance student. So I'm due to finish uh, next year and I'm currently living and studying on campus. Perfect. And last but not least, Adriana. Hello. Hello, guys. I'm a, current, I'm a final student studying business and HRM, and I'm, I live in Leicester as well, so, yeah. Wicked. Now, thank you for joining us today. So, this is the Stark Study Cast that will be able to tackle all your questions, um, any relate, anything related to DMU, anything related to business and law, uh, and that kind of thing. Any questions you might have on um, the course, what it's like to study at DMU, that kind of thing. So, do please encourage you to pop any questions that you do have, in the question section and we'll be able to go through them as we go through this talk today. Um, so I think to start firstly, um, I think we'll bring Marta back onto the screen, if that's okay. Thank you, Marta. And if you could, could you just tell us a little bit more about what it's like um, studying an undergraduate course at DMU um, within business and law? Yeah, not a problem. So business and law faculty offers a variety of courses in different areas that would be accounting and finance, law, marketing, business and management, international relations and politics, human resource management, economics. There's such a variety of courses um, within our faculty. Um, and so definitely you will find something interesting for yourself. Um, a number of our courses is accredited by professional uh, organizations that would be, we have strong links with ACCA, CIMA, CMI, CIPD or CIM and obviously what that means is our courses are um, tailored towards what the industry wants and what uh, sort of employers are looking for in graduates so you, you're certain studying those courses that you will essentially learn the sort of things that you need uh, in your graduate career. Uh, a number of our courses offers exceptions from those professional qualifications and that means that once you for instance finish a course in marketing and then you want to do a professional qualification um, you if you do certain modules, you will be exempt from uh, exams as a part of this qualification, which means essentially you will be able to finish that earlier. Um, and obviously, that's a good thing. Uh, studying in the business and law, you'll be studying Hugh Austin Building, and we have a new addition, the Yard, which provides additional learning space. So that's something quite exciting that's happening uh, within our faculty. And obviously, um, you will have a number of support um, available to you. Um, as a student within our faculty, you will be able to speak to academics. Um, all of them operate on an open day policy. Um, sorry, not open day, open day. Door, <laughs> open door policy, which means that if they're available in the office, um, if they dare, um, just knock on the door and ask any questions that you may have. Um, obviously, you can attend their surgery hours, and there's a number of support available for you to essentially um, do your best uh, in sort of in your academic career. That would be the support available in the library related to writing essays 
or potentially tackling assignments or during uh, references. Um, and there is also a number of um, sort of um, support available um, in the sort of your course as well. Uh, certain courses have a module um, related to employability year one, which is specifically set up to teach you how to approach assignments, um, how to approach your career development, what you want to do um, when you sort of finish and how to go about getting there. So this number of things that is essentially designed for you to do your best. Um, there's also a, a number of online resources available to you as a student. Um, there would be um, library databases which allow you to access uh, research papers that you'll be using for your um, assignments. They quite important you spent quite a lot of time here I can tell you from experience of doing all three years of an undergrad um, besides that uh, we have LinkedIn learning that you can access as a student which allows you to access a variety of workshops that then you can when you finish you can add that to your LinkedIn account and that's obviously amazing different sort of things that you can learn there so um, it's definitely something to look into as well um, and obviously on Blackboard, you will have uh, material for your lectures, additional sort of reading, um, and as a part of the library as well, a number of eBooks or sort of physical books that you can, um, they can access. So loads of things available uh, within the business and law faculty. And if you have any questions regarding any specific course, anything that you would want to find out, uh, we have an open day coming up. Um, in November so we'll put definitely a link somewhere um, in the chat so you can book your place um, and join us there and ask any questions that you may have about studying um, within our faculty. Thank you Marta that was really really insightful. Um, gonna quickly put you on the spot though and can you just tell us sort of what to expect from a digital open day and um, you know maybe why obviously we're in different times at the moment as much as we'd like to go and physically look around different universities and chat with you know academics and students face to face obviously these are going to be done virtually but can you quickly quickly just give us a quick run through of what we can still expect um, even through a digital open day of course there's a number of sort of talks related to every single course where you have students and academics teaching this those courses just chatting to you how you can ask questions um, and certain courses that we have have um, uh, people on the campus doing tours. So, for instance, if you're doing, if you're interested in doing economics or accounting and finance, we have a, a, a tour of the trading room available, or same for law facilities. So, there's loads of things happening on the campus that will be obviously broadcasting live. Um, there is a campus tour as well. Um, if you have any specific questions and you want to chat to someone one to one, there is a number of online chats available as well, and every single academic will be happy to chat to you. So, if you want to be able to uh, you know get a full answer to your question on the open day they're normally more than happy to you know uh, give their details and then you can essentially chat to them after the open day so it's quite insightful there's a lot of things they cannot really get anywhere else um, if you're interested in studying with us so yeah definitely something to um, you know to attend I think no, thank you Marta um, right what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring Dominica onto the screen Hi. Hi, Dominique. You okay? Um, just before we have a quick chat about, you know, some of the reasons you chose DMU and chose the course that you did, would you quickly just remind everybody what course you studied and what year you're in? Sure, not a problem at all. So I'm a second year business law cool, student perfect. LLB. So you chose law LLB. Um, so how did you do your research and essentially why did you choose that course? Why did you choose DMU? Sure. So I was doing A-levels from biology and chemistry. However, then I changed my mind and I was thinking about studying law. And then I find I found DMU. So I visited the DMU website and then I have seen the list of the courses which DMU was offering. I was interested in law. So um, I was looking for law course. However, then I realized that there was a business law course as well available. So I chose this because we started on the um, law. Mm, and I definitely do not regret it because I'm more in the commercial side of the law. And trust me, you will find what you are interested in and so much more than uh, than that because DMU uh, offer a plenty amount of diverse, diverse courses. So yeah, mm, you just need- You've been on any trips, that kind of thing. Yeah, of course. So I'm an active member of Street Law Society because I absolutely love societies at DMU.
Right, it looks like I think we've had a bit of a technical technical glitch there, um, but we'll bring Dominica back in when she's back on the screen. So I can only apologise about that. Um, yeah, I think just briefly touching on what what Dominica was saying there. Um, oh, is she back? She might be back. Yes, sorry. Hello. <laughs> I know, no, no, it's okay. What's happening right now. Sorry, really. Like, this is this is real life. We're all working from home. Um, this yeah. is the reality of. COVID-19, it's absolutely right. fine, do not worry. During so we were talking about... And lecture. We were talking about, yeah, no, don't worry, it's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. Um, we were talking about your extracurricular stuff that you get involved with. Um, yeah. Would you be able to just sort of... Sure, so I'm okay, back in the Street Law Society and I love societies at DMU because there are a lot, a lot of societies really, and they're really interesting. And I think that it's the best idea to meet other people and then you can share your interest with others, which is really amazing way. So I definitely recommend, for example, if you're studying law, just join to the Law Society or Street Law Society or for example, Mooting Society, because it's really interesting as well. We've got a mock court room at DMEO, and it's the place when you can just go on a um, go, go on a trial, not the real trial, but trust me, if you are there, you'll feel like you are on the real trial. So I was so excited. Uh, so you can be a defense or you can be a prosecutor and something like that. Um, so. I, uh, I joined the law, law society, street law society. However, I like dancing, so I've joined hip hop society as well, and I definitely recommend it. Um, in terms, so in terms of societies, I think it's all. However, I'm aware of the DMU Global, which is an amazing way to go on a trip abroad, and DMU offers a lot of opportunities really. So go on the website and check the check the opportunities, cause. I think that the best way to, to live is just um, be an adventurous person and go on a lot of adventures and journeys because, yeah, I think it's the best way because then you can, for example, develop yourself and you can um, you can gain valuable skills as well. So not only just learn, also just you can go for a journey, trip and something like that. So th this way of learning is the good way, I think, as well. And in terms of DMU local, if you're interested in, for example, volunteering, it's the best opportunity to join DMU local. For example, even now during the pandemic, COVID-19, uh, DMU is looking for some volunteers who could, for example, prepare some foods or deliver some food. So I think it could be a great idea to join it. No, uh, Yeah, definitely, definitely things to, you know, worth considering getting involved with. So many opportunities to travel, gain further work experience, meet new people, all that kind of good stuff. Um, just sort of coming it back, bring it back to your course. Um, do you uh -huh. have a module that is the favorite um, favorite of yours, and and why is that your favorite? Of course that I've got. So during my first year, my favorite module was Love Contract because I'm more into the commercial side of law, as I mentioned before. However, I have to say that even though criminal law was really, really interesting, and it was because of the amazing person, my lecturer, who was trying to explain everything in a really easy and funny way. For example, you need to remember remember act as service mentoring because she defense so you can ju just for example uh, now you can rem you can remember it and it will be it will be repeating during your first first year yeah during the whole first year of criminal law um and now i like for example business entities and drafting and negotiation of international agreements it's about for example alternative dispute resolutions such as arbitration negotiation mediation conciliation and the differences with, between them and some conventions or principle principles which you could for example put on the contract and i like substantive law of a of a of the eu sorry because because, for example, we've mentioned some, um, we've mentioned there in some uh, issues such as trade area or common law markets, and especially during the whole Brexit issue, it's really, it's really good to, uh, for lawyers to just be aware of this situation. I think, and yeah, I think that that's all. However, even land law is quite interesting, and law third is good as well. I I think. No, no, thank you. You can see definitely. Uh, <laughs> Definitely very passionate about your course, uh, which is it's really good to see. Um, last sort of thing to ask you, um, do you get involved with any sort of employ employability, you know, 
aspects of your course? Um, you know, what sort of skills have you gained from that? Are you doing things like group projects that, you know? Um... Yeah, I think that um, each of my assessments were, re were really just valuable because, for example, I've got a criminal assessment, which was about increasing the responsibility age from 10 to 12. And it was an essay. I think that it was, a good, it was of course, the parts, um, the group, uh, essay, not like not just individual, and it was my first assessment. I was so glad because I, if I, for example, if I should do that just alone, it would be like confusing, and I would be too scared. But uh, lucky me, the MU is as um, amazing a uh, university that they knew it, so they just um, so lecturer just would like to, for example, encourage people, students to uh, learn, but not like you have to do that. No, it's not like that. It's like, um, it's like the situation should be like easy, funny, and, you know, not a big deal. So I definitely, uh, I definitely like this assessment because it was my first assessment and it was quite okay. However, I like the adv advocacy task as well because I then just got a client, claimant, and I need to put my, for example, um, I need to uh, create an essay, but on behalf on my, of my client. So it was something similar to making a claim. Uh, so it was really good experience because now I'm not aware how it's, how everything works in reality, for example. And it's like, I think that it was the most legal experience during my university. Mm, however, I've done some certificates as well online uh, from, for example, Asher's or BK McKenzie uh, or BK McKenzie certificates of law because um, at DMU we've got a lot of, for example, we've got a placement team, which is really amazing. And this, those per people just help a lot with, have a lot of students to gain so much experience and knowledge, legal knowledge, legal knowledge as well. So yeah, I was so impressed by, th by that. No, thank you, Dominika. That's really, really insightful. And uh, thank you to everybody that is watching. Um, please, please uh, leave us any comments or questions if you do have any. Uh, and we'll try and answer them either during the stream or at the end. Um, and what we're going to quickly do now is we're just going to play you a short video showing you the fantastic facilities that are on offer for our business and law courses. Hi, I'm Aaron and welcome to Leicester Castle Business School. This is the Hugh Aston building where you'll be taught. We have a range of lecture theatres and seminar rooms. This is an example of a seminar room. And this is the lecture theatre. This is the trading room. Students have access to financial information and can learn more about trading through self-taught courses. This is our new 5.5 million pound extension called The Yard. And it has a new student advice centre. We also have extra learning spaces and resources. Want to find out more? Visit our website for more information or come and join us on one of our upcoming open days. So as you can see, fantastic facilities on offer to our students. Um, the yard is something that I never actually, obviously, you know, managed to take advantage of because I graduated in 2017. Um, I stood in the Hugh Aston building, which was included in that video, but we didn't have the, you know, the extra facilities like the yard and that kind of thing. That's a, obviously a recent addition. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pull Keris onto the stream. Hello. Okay, actually, okay. Hello. Um, and we'll just go through some similar questions as we did with Dominica. So just to remind everybody um, what the course is that you're studying and um, what year you're currently in as well. So I'm just in third year. I've just actually um, come back from a business placement, but um, I'm doing accounting and finance. OK, oh, wicked. So you did a placement as well. Cool. So we'll definitely talk about that um, during this little conversation. Um, but just before we do that, um, same again, you know, how did you do your research and ultimately why did you decide on that course and how, why did you decide on DMU? Um, so I've always been very like career focused. I, it was one of my biggest kind of aspirations to make sure that if I did a degree, I would get a grad job at the end. So I always had that in mind with kind of law accounting um, and my A-levels were actually mathematics, physics and law and I really enjoyed law and maths. So I was kind of looking for course a course that crossed both of them and had law and maths at the same time so obviously accounting came into uh into play there and then i did um, a bit of work experience at kpmg i was fortunate enough to um, go there and do a week there 
Um, and then I've just found the, the business environment and just the um, even in a big accounting firm um, was just exactly what I was looking for out of a job. I mean, I was 16 at the time, so I don't think I even really knew <laughs> what I wanted out of a job. But um, that was kind of the closest thing to what I could see myself doing. So um, when I came to DMU, I was thinking about forensic accounting because that is the biggest one that involves law and maths at the same time. Um, and no other universities that I knew did any forensic accounting courses, but DMU does, does a forensic accounting optional, which I'm actually doing currently, which is very interesting. And they do a master's in it. So I thought if that's sort of a career route that I wanted to go down, then DMU was perfect for that. And then quite a few of the modules piqued my interest for the first few years. So that was mainly why, just because the courses were very um, immersive and my kind of thing. Yeah, cool, so you knew that you always wanted to go into um, the course that you decided yeah um so okay so like, unlike myself when I was looking at going to uni I wasn't I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do so I just did something that I thought would have the most employability so if you're someone in your position obviously it does make research in university a little bit easier because you know what you want to do and you know what career you want to do um you also, you've already touched on the fact you did a placement um would you be able to just tell us um what that placement involved maybe where you did your placement and sort of the skills that you gained from that placement uh, and why it's really important um, for students to maybe consider a, a placement, especially in like a business and law course. Yeah, happy to. Um, so I did my placement at a place called uh, Pinewood Technologies in Birmingham. So I'm from Birmingham, so I wanted to have a place kind of at home to start my first kind of full time business job. Um, so basically what I did was I rotated around the departments of their company and they're a software company. So um, every placement student would start out on technical support for a little while to kind of get used to the software that you'd be using and you'd be selling essentially. And then, um, then I did some work on the international team and I did some work on accounts, which obviously helped me quite a lot with um, understanding how accounts work in a business. But I actually found that the most interesting one was the technical support and kind of how they manage that and how businesses deal with technical support. I think maybe because we're in this age now and we went kind of into the um, COVID things very quickly, seeing how a software company reacts to that and kind of like sells based on it and how they dealt with the whole scenario was really interesting. And so to kind of see how how companies change and how um, how they deal with things and what you would be doing in the future. Um, is really interesting. But I think that is again one of the reasons why I came to DMU because obviously I knew I wanted to make sure that I got a grad job at the end and the placement team are just perfect. Like they do CV building, they do assessment center advice, they do um, trial interviews. So like they do everything they possibly can to get you a placement or a grad job. So if you want to do a placement, if you get in contact with them in your second year, they help you a lot with kind of trying to get whatever experience you can, even if it's just the summer or even if it's like a full year or seeing whether you can get a grab job afterwards. So, Yeah, that's super relevant what you said as well. Obviously, you know, you said about software companies during COVID. I mean, yeah. you can always bring up that example of, you know, Skype had that massive head start and then, you know, all of a sudden they've still managed to lose out to Teams and Zoom and that kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously as, as work placements go, I think if you do have the opportunity to potentially go on one, they are going to set you apart from, your your peers and your competition when it comes to graduating and hopefully it will enhance your cv it will give you something to talk about in interviews and that's something you've done which is obviously uh, really really useful um so back to the course um do you have a favorite module or um, favorite part of the course so i came into it thinking that i would be really interested in the kind of um finance side of things obviously because it's accounting and finance um but i actually came out of it really interested in management and taxation so like in decision management, we kind of learn how um, projects are carried through to the end and how to analyze the data to make future decisions. And the management and business side of things were actually something that I found that I kind of got a lot more stuck into. While I enjoy the financial side of it and kind of use it to influence my management decisions, um, that was kind of something I really enjoyed. And then taxation, which apparently is a really surprisingly popular module, because most people think taxation and they go, oh God, but um, but it's really good. You learn how to calculate your own tax and other companies and kind of how to advise it. And it's a little bit more straightforward than finance. So a lot of people enjoy that one. And that's one of the ones that I think is quite um, straightforward and interesting. That sounds good. And uh, I guess last question, um, you know, any, any employability parts of the course, um, how are you finding 
um, the sort of skills that you're, you're you're obtaining from that course and how you can potentially apply them to um, graduate work once you graduate and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I think that um, with accounting, everything mirrors business practice, which is one of the good things about it. Like, there's not a time where you're ever doing anything that's that's all theory. It's always applying to a certain business. So if you see a financial statement, it mirrors a real life financial statement, or you might even be looking at an actual financial statement from a business or how a business operates. But I do have a module this year, which I thought was worth bringing up, which um, is called Managerial Development and Control. And it's a third year module because you need to have kind of all of the information from the other years to kind of back up what your decisions are. But you kind of sort it into teams and then you become a director of the team. So the sort of the production director, the HR manager, et cetera. I'm the uh, managing director for my little team. And then you you manage a company and they give you kind of like all of the information for the company. And then every week they give you like new decisions to make. And then they tell you the outcomes based on the decisions of like this company that you're essentially leading with your friends. And um, so that's really interesting. And this year it's a robotics one and I kind of get to see this company unfold based on the decisions we make. So it's really interesting. Now, that does sound really, really interesting. And clearly, you know, if you want to go into profession, you maybe if you want to be an accountant when it comes to graduating, that sort of thing, you know, all these skills are just gonna obviously put you in a good stead when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, so thank you, Karis, that was really, really interesting. And to everybody that is still watching, thank you. Please do ask us any questions if you have any. Um, and we'll just move on to our next student. So we'll bring Adriana onto the screen, please. Thank you. Hi, Adriana, are you okay? Hi, yes, thank you. Been waiting you. there patiently. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just before we start, same again, would you just quickly reintroduce your course and what year you're in? Yeah, so I'm doing business and uh, human resources management and I'm final year now. Okay, so similar, similar sort of course yeah. to what I did. I did, I did straight uh, HRM, but obviously some, some sort of similar aspects there. Um, so, how did you stumble upon that course? Um, is it, you know, is it a profession you wanted to go into, or is it something that you just thought sounded interesting? Um, so initially, I wanted to be a chemist, actually, a pharmacist. Um, oh, wow. And obviously, DMU was one of the closest universities that actually had that course. So I did apply um, to go to the, the pharmacy course, which was for me because I'm a uh, class as international student was six years, actually five years with one year that I had to work. So pre-registration, which was six years. And so I did get into, um, but then I changed my mind because I thought it was a bit too long for me. And because I'm more mature student, I was 26 at the time. I, I thought I, I don't really want to do it. So then I spoke to the um, agency that actually found me the course in the first place. Um, and I said, look, I don't want to do it anymore. And then they, um, I was looking actually to do accounting or HRM, the human resource management. And they advised that obviously, because I knew that I like to work with people, I knew that was the uh, career that I want to take. Um, so they advised me based on um, like employability. They said probably best um, option will be to do human resources management with business. Because I'm an international student, if I was to go to do the ex exactly same course that you've done, just the human resource management on its own, I would have had to do a four year course. Uh, because it was combined with business, I could do only three years course. Um, and I thought uh, doing both at the same time could be, could give me more of like um opportunities more open like opening more doors for me because I'm not doing just one I'm doing two so that's why I chose this course no it's really interesting to say that I think obviously when it came to potentially us both picking our courses we, we maybe have had a similar mindset um the reason I decided I wanted to do HR in the end uh was because I wasn't like I said wasn't too sure what I wanted to do but I knew that there had been you know some employability within that um, and that's ultimately why I stumbled upon that. I don't work in HRM now. I work in um, more of a, a marketing student recruitment role. But, you know, a lot of the skills that you gain at uni are very transferable. Um, so do you get involved with any extracurricular activity alongside your studies? Um, not unfortunately. I know there is loads that the university does offer to students. I know there is like classing for, I think, sports um, and a lot of different things that I know some of my friends do go to but unfortunately 
because I'm very busy. I'm doing two jobs, university, plus I'm doing some other things on my own. I didn't have the time to do uh, anything like that. But obviously, for any students that want to come to DMU, um, I can assure you there is loads of opportunities. There is loads that you can do. Um, the university do help a lot for you to socialise with other students so you can meet other people. They also have a Facebook page um, for students where you can obviously join and you can find people in the same uh, position as you are. If you are an international student, I, um, I can admit that it's much, you know, it's harder to make friends because, you know, you probably don't know anybody. But like I said, because they have the Facebook page and they have a lot of um, activities that they do, you can meet new people that are probably looking for the same thing as you. They also, I think the university offers, um, as far as I know, some vol volunteering activities that you can join and you meet new friends or something like that, but they do offer a lot for students. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely right with all of that. Um, so just back in terms of the course, so business, uh, medicine management and HRM, um, do you have a favourite module that you're currently studying or one that you have studied um, previously? So obviously because I'm uh, more into the uh, human resources management, that's what I um, see myself doing and obviously that's what the career path that I want to take once I graduate. Um, I, I tend to look more for, um, but I, I don't really have a favourite module personally I enjoy most of my course and um, I do a lot of business side of um, modules I do like global international business issues like management service operation management like how to manage people and stuff like that but at, at the same time I'm more into my HRM where I learn a lot of skills how like for example last year we had um, a project that we had to do um, it was just before we actually uh, the COVID came into play, so we were in quarantine at the time. So we had a um, case study where um, obviously it was to make redundancies. Um, obviously, in that project, I had to look at uh, how to do the um, uh, redundancies. How is you know looking at the business law and looking at ways how you're going to do it before you know businesses don't get <laughs> done for it. So it's very interesting because you learn skills uh, on your own, uh, but at the same time, there is tutor that can, you know, your personal tutor or there is tutors on any modules that you have that can assess you or help you with any questions or anything like that that you might need help with. Yeah, that's really, really insightful. And obviously, clearly, any of the skills that you gain are going to obviously help with your employability and that kind of thing. Obviously, I do just want to quickly apologise. Um, I have a very barky dog and the postman just popped it through the letterbox. So that's probably why you could hear some barking there. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that, Adriana. Uh, and thank I think you. that does wrap up pretty much a lot of what we were going to say today. Um, so still have a chance to pop any questions you might have if you are watching in our comment section. Um, but what we do, will do is if we bring all of the students and Martha back on the screen, um, we do have a few questions for you. So what I will do is I will fire these at you and I'll let you just decide who wants to answer them. You can all chip in. Um, one of you can take it. Um, maybe I can even answer it. Whatever feels most comfortable with you. Um, so I guess first question is sort of similar to something that we've already mentioned today. Um, so to do with, you know, research in the course, research in uni. But do you think you need to have a career path in mind before attending university? If anybody like to take that one yeah. or I can take that one if you like, because I mean, if you want, I can answer that one myself if you like, because um, I did not, like I've mentioned already, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went to uni. Um, I knew that for me personally, uni felt like the natural sort of transition after finishing my A-levels. I knew that I wanted to go to university. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to study, um, but I ultimately um, just fell on a course that I thought had a lot of employability, a lot of transferable skills and something that would open up. Um, you know, a few avenues and a few pathways when it comes to getting a job after graduating and that kind of thing. I don't know if any of you sort of fell into a similar position. I think you all sort of sounded like you sort of had an idea of what you wanted to do. Me, I just didn't know anything. <laughs> uh, however, DMU gave me this ability to recognize that I'm more into commercial law and that it's for me. So I'm really grateful for that. Wicked. Um, so 
Um, this goes out to, I guess, current students. I mean, Marty, you can chip in with this if you want to. But how do you balance having a social life, studying, and you know, having a part-time job at the same time? I'm happy to answer if that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go um, for it. So um, I kind of was in a few societies in first year and in second year. So I was in um, the uh, rock and metal society mostly, where we went out every week. I've also throughout uni always had a job in an office. So um, so I've kind of balanced all of those things. But I think it's actually easier than people expect it because people think, oh God got to go out I've got to study and I've also got to work but if you kind of separate all of them and make sure you have time for each like DMU is great with giving you the assistance and giving you the time and the lecturers are very understanding if you if you need to catch up on things or if if you missed the lecture because you had something to do with work come up you can you can always join another seminar and, and catch up so I think that it's actually easier because the uni is quite understanding that if you need a job you can work around that or even if you just want a job. Um, I know someone who just does seminars in the first two days of the week and then he works from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at an accounting firm. So he kind of does both. And I think the uni is quite um, like facilitating towards you working and studying. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's just worth mentioning as well. Um, the sort of time management skills that you're going to get through going to university, you might not think they're important at the time or when you're considering uni, but you know, when you're in a, in a job and you've graduated that kind of thing, they do become really important and they do sort of help you uh, with, with all aspects of sort of, you know, everyday life and that sort of thing. Um, did I just sort of, someone about to say something there? I wasn't, no, I heard a bit of a noise. Um, so another question. So, I heard that university life is very independent and there's not much support on offer. Now, would you believe this is true? No, no, it's not true. We always get support. <laughs> there, there is the um, support advice team. You can always email or call and there is always support. The, I, I'm sure you can um, actually um, speak to people over the uh, social media as well. So it's always somebody there for you if you need them. Yeah, and DMU offers, for example, global, DMU local, placement team, activities, events, workshops, DMU works, DMU library, library, and a lot of resources, for example, Westlaw on LexisNexis for law, for law students. And for example, we've got also the software such as Microsoft Office and for art students, some special software and the student discount up to um, probably 10%. I guess, yeah, so trust me, you'll, you'll find something for you. <laughs> no, definitely, no, that's really good. If I can add something, I think the bottom line is, um, it can be independent if that's what you want it to be. There's a lot of support available, but no one is going to force it on you. So if you're struggling in any way, there's loads and loads of things um, they can access that will help you in loads of different parts of the university. There's uh, the gateway support that um, obviously that's for, for absolutely everything. If you're pre preparing for interviews for a placement, or if you're struggling with time management, or if you're struggling with finance, there's loads of support there. Every academic will be happy to help you. You've got your personal tutor, there's loads of support in the library so if you're struggling there are things to access it may be just difficult to know where to go but that's why you have your personal teacher that's where the sort of um, obviously the advice center is so uh, definitely can be independent if you're not facing any issues and if you're comfortable with that but I think there are things to access as well. Yeah, cool thank you Marta. Um, so another question we've got here is um, what advice would you give to a student who does not know what they want to do? So I was in the, I can uh, I can answer that so because I was in the same position last year so I recommend that do some, do some for example online quiz about their personality and skills then uh, it will show you the um, then it will show you probably in which type of work they would be useful. So do some research about these types of works and then just find um, on the EMU website a list of courses and try to match with the jobs and definitely read the descriptions of these courses because the EMU provided it really, really good. And you can check also the models as well if you like it uh, or if you don't like it. And it will, for example, help you to choose the course. <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely. I think research is key. Obviously, um, you know, the earlier you start doing your research, uh, the more likelihood there is of, you know, figuring out what course you want to do. I think we might have lost Omnika again, but I'm sure she'll be back um, shortly. Um, but yeah, obviously, if you, if you attend things like digital open days, because they're probably going to be what we have available for the foreseeable future anyway, you do things like that, you know, ask the questions that you want to ask, research the websites, order prospectus, that kind of thing. And then when it comes to actually applying, you know, you won't have to rush into anything or make the wrong decision. Um, so, Marta, I'm going to ask this one to you because you work within the business and law faculty. Now, what happens if a sh what what if I haven't done the relevant A levels for a business and law course? Sorry, well, most of the business and law courses don't have any specific requirements in terms of the A levels that you do have to take, um, as long as you meet the sort of point requirements. On top of that, if you if it's some if it's the question of how will I struggle? Uh, the answer is the first year is designed for everyone to be brought on the same level. Um, so you learn um, pretty much the same modules as very similar courses. So for instance, if you do marketing, you will have the same sort of modules as accounting students. I did finance uh, module in my first year. Percy does not enjoy that. I'm not a sort of numbers person, uh, but at least it it sort of broadens your um, horizons and allows you to, for instance, make that decision after the first year. Is that definitely what I want to do? Do I definitely want to do marketing or perhaps I want to do marketing with business? Because the module in your first year related to entrepreneurship, which is something that you enjoyed the most. But the first year is designed to bring everyone on the same level. And that allows you to then obviously, um, yeah, do better in your second year. So I wouldn't worry if you did arts um, and what, now you want to do business. You have to put a lot of effort in your first year to get to the same level as people who did a business A level, but that's what it's designed for. And that's why first year doesn't count. So this is the time to make mistakes, uh, learn, and then go into your second year being on the same level as everyone else on your course. No, that's very true. Thank you, Marta. Um, so we've got a couple more questions. Um, so I guess this is probably for our current students. Um, and if you don't know the answer or you're not too sure yet, that's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to ask you is what kind of job are you hoping to get when it comes to you finishing your degree? I mean, I, um, I'm i definitely looking at lots of different jobs at the moment. So um, I've kind of found that through accounting, there's quite a few things that I'll be going to and things that I have enough information now to kind of go into the professional world of. So I'm kind of looking at finance jobs, but I'm also looking at project management jobs and like data analytics. So there's quite a few things that I'm currently looking at in terms of grad jobs. Cool. Um, Adriana, do you have any idea what you're looking to go into HRM or? Yeah, but obviously I'm very open-minded. So uh, because I'm doing business as well as uh, HRM, uh, I can apply for marketing, I can go into uh, management, uh, it's not um, set stones that I have to do, just uh, human resources. Definitely. And uh, Dominica? Oh, this is a good question. However, I'm thinking about solicitor or barista. I'm not sure right now. And for example, something which is related to commercial law. Yeah. <laughs> cool. No, thank you, guys. Um, so what advice would you give to students thinking about a business law accounting or finance degree or what what i'd say is if you were in the position of a student and you wish someone could tell you a little piece of advice what would that advice be just be relaxed do not overthink don't panic everything will be okay rolidemio is amazing university who, which is helping students a lot, really, so trust me. And if you really would like to prepare something for, for example, law degree, then you can, for example, read the scholar reference citation guide. It could be useful for you for essay, for writing essays or something like that. Cool. No, And thank you. Um, I just want to say, obviously, a massive thank you to all of our panel today. So thank you to Marta, Adriana, Keris and Dominica. Um, we are going to finish the live stream there. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in and asking your questions. Um, before we do finish, we just want to share with you a, a quick video um, and make sure you head to our website, check out our digital open day, uh, which Marta already mentioned. So you can sign up for that by visiting our website. Um, enjoy the video. Have a good rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy. And we hope to see you at DMU in the future. Thank you very much. 
Hi, I'm Sabina. I'm a business and marketing student here at DMU in my final year. Um, I chose to come to DMU because it's a campus university in a city, which is great because everything's all in one place, so things are easy to find for university, and there's loads of opportunities to pop into town, socialise, go shopping, catch up with friends. It's just a great place to be. Um, I chose to do business and marketing because ever since I studied business at GCSE, it's been something I'm really passionate about. And the great thing about being here at DMU is we get the opportunity to work on live briefs. So you'll get to see what it's like to work on a brief for industry. And also we have a lot of industry talks and guest speakers, which is also a great insight into what it's like to work in the real world in the business. Here at DMU, there's also the opportunity to do a placement year, which was something that was really important to me when I was making my decision of where I was going to go to university, because I think placements are a really valuable thing to do. So last year, I worked at a PR and social media agency, which gave me great insight into what it's like to work in the PR industry. I got to network with loads of people. I gained loads of industry experience, as well as improving my life skills like presentations and networking. So I would highly recommend coming to DMU. It's a great, great place to be, and we look forward to seeing you soon.